Okay, let's talk a little bit about an important device that's used in many digital systems, including to support the bidirectional bus that we just saw in our memory module. A tri-state device has three states or possible outputs. One and zero are typical binary signals, as well as a third state or output of high impedance, which we usually mark with the symbol Z. And you can think of this as being a high resistance or disconnected or an open circuit state. The symbol for a tri-state, we usually draw with this triangle with three ports. There's the input A, which when the tri-state de device is enabled with this control signal enable, will simply pass to the, the input A will pass to the output, whether it's a zero or a one. And when the enable is zero, this will act essentially as a switch or an open circuit where the output F is disconnected. No current is flowing then from the input to the output. And we can express this either in this characteristic table shown here. So when enable is zero, the output is high impedance disconnected, or if it's enabled, whatever the input, that's what our output is, or using a compressed characteristic table shown to the right here. Now, tracer devices can be used in circuits in different ways. One common way is with memories or with registers and creating buses. So in the case of a register, if we have a tri-state port, in this case, the output right here, we can usually specify this with this little upside down triangle signal on that particular port. And the timing diagram for this then would look something like this. So if I have this register, when the, a rising clock edge, I'm reading the input and the load signal is high, then I'm changing after some small delay, the state of that register and the output will just be the context of the register as long as the enable signal is high. When the enable goes low, however, that tri-state device on the output is going to disconnect the output and I'll start to see high impedance instead on the output, which I see here. Okay, so as I was saying though, one of the major uses for this is resource sharing and creating buses. So if I have several registers, or other pieces of logic, I can connect them over a single wire. In this case, the outputs and the inputs for both of these registers are all tied together with one single wire. So this saves me on logic and area. The big limitation for this then, as you can probably guess, is that now I have to share this and I can, I'm limited on the types of data transfers I can do and in a particular clock cycle or at a particular time. And for this reason, for high performance systems that have or need high performance interconnects, using MUXs might be a better strategy. We'll talk some more about this later in the slides when we talk about RTL. Whenever you see a memory or a storage element that has this little upside down triangle, and especially the arrows going both directions, this will tell you that this is likely a, a bi-directional port and the underlying circuit would look something like this. So our normal register as we saw in 133 with a tri-state device on the output. Okay, so let's put this all together and look at an example of how we can build a larger RAM from small RAM chips. So let's say that we want to build a 512 by eight memory and we're gonna use 256 by eight RAM chips like we saw earlier. So the first thing I'll need to do is figure out how many of these smaller RAM chips do I need to meet the capacity of the larger chip. And in this case, the larger RAM that I'm building has the same word or bit length, it's eight bits on the output. So I'm just gonna need one chip to store each word. And then I need to determine how many locations I need. So in this case, I have 512 locations. Each smaller chip has 256. So I'll just need two of these smaller chips to make up the 512 RAM. So I'll draw two of these RAM chips, 256 by eight. And for the larger 512 by eight RAM chip, I need to figure out how many address bits I need in total. Well, 512 is equivalent to two to the nine. So I'm gonna need nine bits of address. The smaller chips, the 256 is equivalent to two to the eight. So those take eight bits of address. So what I can do is I'll use the lower eight bits of address that come into the 512 memory and tie that to both of these smaller chips. And then I'm going to have to select whether I have the upper part of the memory or the lower part using the most significant bit from the address, in this case, address bit eight, the ninth bit. And that's gonna feed into the decoder, in this case, just a two to one decoder, which is essentially just an inverter in this case, to select which of these particular RAM chips I'm enabling at a given time. And then the outputs, the data bus, or the input in this case, if I'm also reading, is connected over a single wire, a single bus. So if I have an address between zero and 255, it's stored in this top RAM chip. The top address bit, address eight will be zero. So I will enable the top RAM chip and the bottom RAM chip will be disabled or disconnected from the bus. If I'm at address 256 up to 511, this is data stored in the lower RAM chip. So I will disable the top RAM and enable the, the lower RAM chip. 
Okay, let's look at another example. So let's say we wanted to build a 32K by 8 RAM chip, as we did in the earlier slides, using smaller 8K by 8 RAM chips. So in this case, again, the math works out kind of nice. There's going to be four 8K by 8 chips to make up a 32K by 8 memory. If the word length of the larger memory, say this was 16, then I'm going to need two of these 8K by 8 RAM chips for each particular word in the larger chip to start because each of these only has eight bits. In this case, they're both again eight. So the circuit again will look very similar. I have four rows for these 8K by 8 chips. The outputs, the input bus, the data bus is connected to the same for all of these. For 32K, remember we saw it's going to have 15 bits of address. 32 is 2 to the 5K. Kilo is 2 to the 10. So I have 2 to the 15 possible locations in my memory. The smaller 8K by 8 chips have two to the 13 locations so they're going to need 13 bits of address and so i'm going to use the lower again 13 bits of the 32k by 8 memory to specify the address for all these smaller chips and then the upper two bits are going to be used in, to feed into a two to four decoder which then will select the particular row that i have the data stored in